All right, if uh, Will Muschamp will talk about his football team, we'll uh, do the tour for him. Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football. We got uh, Will Gunter on the line from the all-new early game, 107.5 the game in Columbia, South Carolina. Will, how you doing? Doing good. Doing good. Yeah, if you can't get one Will Muschamp, you just go with another Will. Just throw in the backup. It's good to have depth, right? Well, if it means anything, I, I prefer to talk to you. Okay, I appreciate but, it. But if somebody yeah. could set up a Will Muschamp appearance on Mark Rogers TV, I would, I would be all for it. There's no question about that. Don't don't hold your breath on that. Just, <laughs> just settle settle for what you're getting. Settle for, be happy with what you're getting. Oh, I'm happy. I'm happy to get you back on the show here. Yeah. No question about there. Uh, so we're going to talk quarterback situation, uh, and we'll let everyone know that doesn't follow South Carolina on a regular basis that the Gamecocks have been in camp for quite some time, but they don't talk much to the media and don't get as much information out as the Steve Spurrier uh, regime in particular. But uh, Jake Bentley's the quarterback. Before we move on, Will, I know we're going to talk backups. Uh, Bentley doesn't seem, in my eyes, statistically, and probably having watched a little less South Carolina last year than I did the year before because they were better, and I usually watch the better games and the bigger teams, watched quite a bit the year before in 2017, uh, that there hasn't been that development into one of the elite quarterbacks in the conference like many expected. Well, you saw it after the uh, – to take you to kind of walk you back through last year, the Kentucky game uh, was one of his worst performances he'd ever had. I think he had to go back. I think he threw four interceptions in the in the loss to Kentucky, and actually got injured at the very end of it. And then the next week they played Missouri uh, at home. Michael Skarnecchia came in and won the football game for him. Made a pass late in the ball game. Was able to go down the field and uh, and kick a field goal as the as the clock hit triple zeros. The week after that, South Carolina played Texas A and M. Will Muschamp went back with Jake Bentley. He was healthy. And in the first quarter, Jake Bentley threw one of the worst interceptions of his career. It was a fade pattern in the end zone. It was wildly underthrown. If he connects on it, maybe South Carolina wins that game, uh, even though it was a first quarter pass. But he got booed coming off of the field. He was booed. And from the second quarter of the Texas A&M game through really halftime of the Akron game, the rest of the season, Jake Bentley was one of the best, obviously wasn't better than Tua, but one of the best, if not the second best quarterback in the SEC, statistically, going from the second quarter of the A&M game uh, in about mid-October all the way through to uh, the first weekend in December, they played Akron in an extra game. Even go back to the, the Clemson game, uh, where he, against that Clemson defense, he threw for 510 yards and five touchdowns. Now, unfortunately... Something happened in the bowl game. We don't know. I, I, a, I think maybe it was not just Jake Bentley. It was the team. And I think in the bowl game, he was 17 of 41 and threw multiple interceptions and just a, pit, a pathetic performance. And South Carolina's offense didn't score. So there has been times. And last year, you go back to the Mississippi game, he was fantastic. He was efficient against Tennessee. He was great against Clemson, even in a loss uh, to the number two Tigers. But his senior season will be about consistency and not having – uh, the the bad game to go along with the good game. So let's move it to the uh, backup quarterback position. I would love for somebody with all the statistics that are out there to provide a statistic to let us know based on injury and then maybe separate that from poor performance. How much does a backup quarterback play? Because you got to have a good one, uh, a, somebody that's going to be serviceable, that's not going to mess up the offense, that's not going to lose games for you. So it is Obviously, when the, when the starter's healthy and he's out there, he's uh, this number two guy is the least important guy in the roster, but then he becomes the most important guy in the roster in one play. So it's good to have, uh, you know, uh, guys that you can trust at the number two spot. Well, I, for South Carolina, it's, it's a, an, an interesting spring from the quarterback position, even though we all know that Jake Bentley is locked in and will start the opener on August 31st against North Carolina. We know uh, that that's going to happen, barring something catastrophic, some type of injury uh, in fall camp. What we don't know is who will be the backup. And South Carolina has positioned itself, thanks to Kurt Roper and thanks to Dan Werner, uh, all of a sudden where their quarterback room this spring is, is actually pretty strong. You have Jay Urich, who at least had a Tennessee offer on the table and is, is now going to be a red shirt, uh, I think, sophomore, I believe. You have on Joyner, who was a four-star recruit, highly thought-of recruit coming out of uh, Fort Dorchester High School down in the low country of South Carolina, is a dual-threat type of quarterback. As a matter of fact, there's been a lot of talking. He needs to improve his passing. 
but was a guy that a lot of people were very excited about and were surprised that we didn't see in a more active role last year. And, of course, you have the hot new stud, Ryan Holinsky, who was a top 60 recruit who was labeled as the top two or three, uh, number two or three quarterback in the country, performed very well in high school, came across the country from our, uh, from California. And so all of a sudden you have some dynamics there. We know at the quarterback position that guys go somewhere to play. You saw that with Jacob Eason at Georgia. You saw that with Hunter Johnson at Clemson. Obviously, we saw it with Justin Fields at Georgia. And so it's an interesting spring from that uh, aspect of where if South Carolina, if what happens with the carry-on joiner? Uh, I think Ryan Holinsky's not going anywhere for a while, but if you come out of the spring and you talk about the depth, the carry-on joiner spent a full year here. He enrolled early. This was a big get for Will Muschamp. The carry-on joiner was two years ago in the 2018 recruiting cycle, and now all of a sudden that position, that backup position, and looking toward the future, it's, it's in a good spot. You have options. As a matter of fact, for 2020, this particular recruiting class, they already have one of the top dual-threat quarterbacks committed, a, a top 50 recruit in Luke Doughty out of Myrtle Beach. South Carolina's done a good job all of a sudden building some depth at the quarterback position, but as we've seen at Georgia, it's hard to sustain that because guys want to go somewhere and play. So when the quarterback position might be the most fascinating position for South Carolina during the spring, even though we don't get to see it, because of the long-term future that it could have on this program. Again, we know the Jake Bentley situation, but how's it going to shake out behind him, not only for 2019, but for 2020, 2021, and so forth and so on. And what you touched upon there, Will, is something that we're starting to see uh, with this transfer portal is that uh, just about everybody's going to be burned by it at some point, and specifically at the quarterback position. Yeah, if you stack them up too, too deep, then you're going to be losing somebody. But it's better to at least have two or three guys that can play and lose one or two than uh, not have any at all and just hope that uh, there's going to be that rare exception. It seems that some guys are going to stick it out and try to compete, even if they're not considered to be the favorite for the starting job. Got uh, Will Gunter on the line from the all-new early game, 107.5, the game in Columbia, South Carolina, talking uh, South Carolina football, of course, with the Gamecocks on the field about three weeks into spring practice. Uh, we uh, encourage you to support the channel here if you enjoy the discussions with Will and other broadcasters, bloggers, and writers. Uh, you can grab uh, the Amazon link in the description section of any of the videos. Also, go to Patreon and join us right there as well. So for a good quarterback to uh, be able to perform, obviously he needs some threats on the outside. I know that you were happy and thrilled about seeing what the wide receivers would do as a core going into this past season. Uh, they, they certainly performed when given the chance, when Bentley was on his game, when he had the support uh, from the running game in the offensive line. Debo Samuels is gone. Brian Edwards is still one of the top players in the league. Uh, how do you assess that position? Uh, you know, it's interesting. Last year, that was a group that we all thought, a lot of people thought, was going to be maybe top five nationally, one of the top groups in the SEC. And they had a lot of drops last year. Drops were a problem very early on. Again, Brian Edwards had a big drop, wide open touchdown against Texas A&M that, that maybe again wins that ball game. South Carolina blew that Texas A&M game last year for a lot of different reasons. Uh, but there was some drops at critical times last year. And that, and that included Debo Samuel. And uh, so the good thing was... Debo Samuel sat out the bowl game. We we got to see the South Carolina offense without Debo Samuel. They were 17 of 41 passing and no points. It's not so good. So, you know, the, this offseason, you know what Brian Edwards is. Josh Van is a guy that they really like who's got to step up. The, the guy to keep an eye on is Shai Smith. Shai Smith really came on last year and has turned into quite a dynamic playmaker for them. Has had some big catches in his career. He's going into year three. It's going to be his time. Uh, along with Brian Edwards to be the top two guys. But Josh Van's another guy. I think I think when you talk about it, Josh Van is built very similar to Debo Samuel and, and was a big-time recruit. South Carolina went into the state of Georgia and beat Georgia for Josh Van. They did want that young man. They wanted him in their receiving group. And South Carolina was able to go in and get him. Uh, so it's a big spring for him. The other guy to keep an eye on who's still out right now, or Trey Smith, a bigger-bodied wide receiver, 6'4", 230 pounds. But he's been out with a, a kneecap injury that required surgery back during the season, and he actually redshirted. But uh, they need to get him back. There's still some depth there. 
No freshman enrolled early. Kavon Mullins is a guy that they're very happy about uh, to have landed his signature in the recruiting process, but not on campus yet. So you're giving other guys a chance. Uh, Randrakis Davis is a guy who gets a chance. You get Chavez Dawkins a chance uh, to continue to build that depth under uh, Brian McClendon, the both offensive coordinator and wide receivers coach. But uh, you go back to it, you're right. You, you, you're going to have to find a way to consistently replace the big threat ability that Debo Samuel gave you. All right, uh, Mark Rogers TV, the voice of college football, uh, talking South Carolina. The best way we know how to do that is to bring on Will Gunter from uh, the all-new early game, 107.5, the game in Columbia, South Carolina, right there in Gamecock country. Um, so you've got a new defensive line coach here. you got uh, John Scott Jr. You also have the very best or near the best uh, recruit in a five-star in Zach Pickens coming in who may actually look, make uh, Scott eventually look very good at coaching his position. So um, some some star power there at the defensive line spot. It, it's a big year for South Carolina on the defensive line. I think uh, that is where you see championships won. We can talk about Deshaun Watson and Trevor Lawrence at, at Clemson and winning a national championship. But that program went to another level when they had Dexter Lawrence or when they recruited Dexter Lawrence and Christian Wilkins, Cleveland Farrell, Austin Bryant. And they've had those guys roll through. It's not just those guys. You can go back and you see Grady Jarrett and Vic Beasley. South Carolina's in the same boat. So when, when – Steve Spurrier had his best teams. You had Marcus Lattimore. You had Alshon Jeffrey. You had Connor Shaw. But you had Jadavian Clowney. You had Melvin Ingram. You had Cliff Matthews. You had Travian Robertson. Uh, I know I'm leaving people off. I, I've talked about this last few days, and I know I'm leaving other defensive linemen off. Kelsey Quarles was a very good one. You had defensive linemen. So last year was the first time I noticed South Carolina was going to play Georgia, and you looked at the South Carolina defensive line, and you went, man, that, that's a small group outside of Javon Kinlaw, and sure enough, Georgia just ran rough shot over him in the second half. That has to be fixed. Well, you have Javon Kinlaw back. He's not participating this spring, of course, because of an injury. You bring in a five-star recruit in Zach Pickens. You bring in another highly thought-of four-star recruit in Joseph Anderson. Kobe Smith is a big defensive tackle in the interior. It's back as a senior. Kier Thomas is back for his 22nd year. He's finally a senior from what they're telling me. So you've got some depth. DJ Wanham at the defensive end position is back. They've got some depth all of a sudden. They've got some playmakers at that position. And you're right, John Scott Jr. inherits a, a position that's not the best in the league. Let's be perfectly clear about that. But it's closer to the top now than it is to the bottom. And in the SEC, you win with defensive line. And it's going to be fascinating to see how this line plays out here in 2019. And this spring, getting Zach Pickens and Joseph Anderson and those guys, those reps, with Javon Kinlaw being out, that's important, being able to get those guys up to speed. When you look at playing run-first teams, teams that come in and flat out shove it down your throat like Clemson, like Georgia, like Alabama this coming year. We talk about it all the time, Will. This uh, program under Will Muschamp went from three wins to six to nine. You talk to people on the radio every day. I'm sure you get stopped constantly, and people are asking you, what about South Carolina? How good are they going to be this year? And then they give you their take. And, and I got to think that was very, very optimistic going into last season. Uh, but this was the first bump in the road, going from nine wins to seven wins. So what are the expectations? How are the fans reacting to the drop-off in wins? And now going from where it was, Georgia, and if anybody's going to take down Georgia, most people were thinking across the nation, well, that South Carolina game in week two versus now it's suddenly Georgia, Florida, and then everybody else in South Carolina is just kind of in the mix. Because of the schedule, when you're going to play three teams that are top four teams right off the bat, as a matter of fact, I think ESPN put out their way too early preseason game, and I want to say five of the games are against top ten teams. You throw in Texas A&M, uh, a trip to Texas A&M, and you throw in Florida in there. Uh, all of a sudden, your 2019 schedule, at least on paper, has five top ten teams. And, and the South Carolina fans are realistic about that. Now, they, they get Florida at home. And, look, South Carolina had Florida beat in the Swamp last year. All right? Florida, South Carolina had them beat and blew that one. South Carolina blew the Florida game and blew the Texas A&M game. There's just no question about that. They also got lucky to win the Missouri game. So, you know, these things kind of even themselves out. But South Carolina blew those games. Um, you know, the expectation in, in 2019 is going to be, hey, at some point, you got to beat Kentucky. You can't keep losing. You want to say you're better than Kentucky? You got to beat them. Uh, you, is it realistic to expect to beat Clemson in 2019? I don't know. I think the general feeling I get is that in 2019, you've got what we consider the big three, the big three games Georgia, Clemson, Alabama. Two of those are at home. 
Alabama and Clemson are at home. Georgia's on the road. Uh, Texas, throw Texas A&M in there because South Carolina's not beating Texas A&M. You've got to win one of those four games. you, you got to win one of those four, and then you need to hold serve with everything else. You get Kentucky and Columbia. You get Florida and Columbia. Don't trip up and lose to Tennessee in, in Neyland Stadium in Jeremy Pruitt's second year. Uh, you know, obviously don't lose to Vanderbilt. You got a season opener against North Carolina and Mac Brown. Don't allow them to establish a foothold in an area you're trying to recruit and lose a game that you shouldn't lose to North Carolina in that season opener. So it's it's kind of a weird situation in which I think fans look at the record and say, "Hey, we could be seven and five, you know, with with losses to." You know, Alabama, Clemson, Georgia, and then, and then you know, Florida's not bad, and, and, you know, we lose to Texas A&M, and be a pretty good football team, and there's no shame in that, but they want to see a step made against these big names. you got to get kind of that signature victory here in 2019. I asked that question, Will, and I forgot about the schedule. <laughs> yeah, that schedule is brutal. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. I also asked that, and you alluded to last season, and I'm remembering watching the fourth quarter of that Florida game thinking I'm the smartest guy on the planet because I tech took South Carolina not only with the points but to pull off the upset for the big money play, and it was falling right into my lap, and then psh, they just blew it in the last four or five minutes. And that's happened. That's, that's, and that goes back to Jake Bentley. I don't put the Florida game on him. Uh, and he played He played pretty good in the Texas A&M game outside of that first quarter. Again, uh, the Florida game was just, I think uh, you felt like that was Will Muschamp reverting back to Will Muschamp of the Florida days. Uh, running the football when South Carolina was just going up and down the field against Dan Mullen's defense, conceivably as good as they were against Clemson. That first quarter, again, that first half against Florida was as good as the South Carolina offense looked all year. Um, there, there's reason to believe, there's reason for optimism. The schedule uh, you, you, they're going to need to get a signature victory in 2019. It doesn't matter who. South Carolina fans will take any of it. Who cares? Alabama, Georgia, Clemson. Just get one of them. That's all people are asking for. Folks, if you enjoy the conversation on college football on a daily basis with uh, some of the top guests, including Will, uh, you got to support us at Patreon. Uh, check us out and what we've got available there. And also, if you grab uh, the Amazon link down in the description section, then you help us out by doing your Amazon shopping. Forget the product. You don't need to buy it. Just enter Amazon using the link. Will, we appreciate you stopping by. It's been a while. Hope you're enjoying yourself. I know you're running around like a wild man, but uh, with the temperatures getting uh, warmer for us, but warmer, you know, much warmer in relation. Uh, yeah. I know what that means for you. It means 70s and 80s for you. It means 40s and 50s for me, but uh, we'll get there. We're, we're, you're right. We're getting it. I was just looking. Yeah, it's rainy today. Rainy, and we're hoping for... We're open for seven. It's about 25 degrees when I went to the radio station one morning this week. So I'm, I'm ready like everybody else for, for 70 degree, 80 degree weather. Thanks, Will. You have a good one, man. You too. Take care.